So I was at the dollar store the other day. Sometimes I come across items that would make magnificent terrain pieces for my tabletop games. Like these plastic bonsai trees. I call items like this 80% builds because, well, they're about 80% ready for the game table. But who wants to watch a movie that's 80% through its runtime? By the time I get them to the table, there are only a few features or touch-ups that I need to add to make them game table ready. And that's the problem. As a crafter, I'm always open to the potential of items that don't seem very useful as tabletop terrain. But I also want to be open to the obvious terrain pieces as well, like these cacti. Look at these plastic plants clustered on the ceramic planter. These are definitely 80% ready for the table. We've already posted a few videos on mushrooms, so we don't want to be repetitive. At the same time, we want to share with the community that we can sometimes find treasures like these that don't take a lot of work to turn them into awesome table terrain. It turns out that we can showcase these great finds from the dollar store without providing a bunch of repetitive tutorial steps and just share how we added the last 20% to these mostly finished builds. And that's what we're going to share in this video. To start, let's take a quick look at the bases we're going to use. These thin natural wood planks are from the dollar store and they're the perfect size for the terrain we're going to add to them. Because our bases are going to be outdoors, we'll base coat the wood with burnt umber. You can make some Mod Podge in if you want, but the wood is more than durable enough to survive the abuse and the moisture we're going to be adding to it without warping it. These are two of the varieties of plastic bonsai trees I found. These trees are perfect for the game table, but they are inside these heavy ceramic planters. The textured tree bark is surprisingly detailed and the green foliage is quite thick. The transition between the branches and the foliage isn't optimal, but I'm still quite happy with these trees. We need to remove the tree from the base, which is easy enough just to pull them out of the foam. We'll save the planter and the gravel layer inside for some future project. We can easily remove the spike from the bottom of the tree and smooth out the base of the trunk so it's easier to glue to our base. Speaking of which, I want to glue some rocks I found behind my house to the base. These rocks will keep the base steady and prevent the trees from tipping over. Just so all the tree bases are not the same, we can use some thick fibrous rope to create some enlarged roots for our trees. After cutting a length of rope, we can separate the braids into constituent strands and cut them into even shorter pieces. Next, we'll drop them into some 50-50 glue and water mixture and set them down on our base to act as enormous roots. We can't forget to leave enough room for our tree trunk. Next, we'll add a layer of tacky glue to our base to hold our turf. We want to keep the location where the tree trunk is going to be located free of any glue and turf so that there is a better bonding surface. We also want to keep as much glue off the rocks as possible unless you want to make them look like they have moss growing on them. I suggest using a variety of colored turf, whether homemade or store-bought, like these great colors from Woodland Scenics. I recommend that you use at least two different colors or shades to add some variety to your base. We cover the tacky glue with our turf, using two or more colors. Don't forget about the outside edges of the base and under the edges of the rocks. After the first layer is dry, we can saturate it with a 50-50 glue and water mixture. Then we sprinkle additional colors of turf to break up the surface of the base. While the surface is still wet with glue, we can add some Army Painter Meadow Flowers for an extra splash of color. All I have left are these yellow flowers, but they'll do the trick. Now that the rope strands are dry, we can add a wash of Agrax Earthshade to them. This will darken the rope so that the fibers will be roughly the same color as the bark on our plastic trees. When the wash dries, our rope will appear to be very large roots growing across the base. Once the base is completely dry, we can glue our bonsai tree to it. I lightly sprayed most of the foliage on the trees with a green primer in order to remove the plastic shine so that they don't look like fake plants. We can add some hot glue to the bottom of the tree and then press the tree trunk into the clear space we left on the base. 
Hold the tree tightly in place for about 10 seconds and let the hot glue bond the two surfaces together. Now that this tree is done, I'll make five more. Next, let's look at these cactus planters. The planter itself is nice, but it's the cacti we're interested in. We have four different types on one planter, and we can rebase these to use on our game table. The plastic plants are easy to remove from the styrofoam base. We can tidy up the plants and base them in a desert environment. We're going to use these three centimeter or one and a quarter inch metal washers to base each of the cacti. We want to change the texture of the washer to be more desert-like, and to that end we'll cover up with a coarse decorative sand from the dollar store. We can cover the base with some E6000 and spread it around with a craft stick before pouring the decorative sand over the washer. We shake off the excess sand and let it dry. We have one base for each plant rather than clustering several of them onto just a few large bases. I'm going to use this Army Painter Skeleton Bone Tan Primer to paint our sandy washers. Next we'll use some burnt umber to dry brush the sandy texture. We'll do this as a traditional dry brush with very little paint on our bristles, so we can leave just a hint of darker brown on our tan surface. Now we can assemble the cacti. We need only remove the oversized stems, and then we can glue the cactus directly to the base. Depending on the physical shape of the cactus, you may need to reinforce the hold on the base. The last 80% build are these fabric mushrooms. We've made two rather lengthy videos on building DIY mushrooms, but these are already completed. We do need to remove the clip on the back, the loose foliage on the bottom, and the glue wisps that are still attached. These mushrooms look pretty good as they are, but I think I want to brighten up the colored pattern on the top of the mushroom. To that end, I'm going to use this Drachenhof Nightshade Wash from Citadel to brighten up the blue color of the mushroom, and then use some light blue paint to repaint the scales on the cap. Likewise, I'm going to use a Bailton Green Wash to highlight these green mushrooms, and use some orange acrylic paint to repaint the scales on the cap. To make sure that these mushrooms sit flat on the base, I'm going to cut the bottom off and separate a few of them so they can stand alone rather than in clusters of three. The core of the mushroom is made with styrofoam, so they're quite easy to cut with a hobby knife. Then we add some hot glue to the flat bottom and place it on our base. You can plan ahead how you want to arrange your mushrooms, or do it on the fly like I did. After we have placed all our mushrooms, we can add some tacky glue and cover the base with turf like we did with the trees earlier. The last decoration I want to add is some clump foliage. I like the clump foliage from Woodland Scenics, but you can use other brands or make your own. You can use PVA glue or any other clear drying glue with clump foliage, but in the interests of speed, I'm using my glue gun. We need only place our clumps near the base of the mushrooms to hide the joining lines where the plant and the base meet. I suggest using at least two different colors, and they don't even have to be green. And when the last of the foliage is added, we're done another terrain feature. I'm constantly seeing items at the dollar store, hardware stores, and craft stores that would take very little work to turn them into wonderful tabletop terrain pieces. As I said at the start of the video, I call these items 80% builds because they're mostly complete when I buy them. In this case, I needed only to add bases to these and brighten up the mushrooms, but otherwise these terrain pieces came ready-made. In total, I spent more time waiting for the glue to dry than I spent building the rest of these terrain pieces. Pieces like these are ideal for novice terrain builders, because they don't have to have a lot of experience or skill to get awesome results. They're great finds for experienced crafters, because they can quickly build multiple items in bulk. These items are just a few examples of potential terrain pieces you might be able to find that can quickly and easily be turned into awesome scatter terrain for your game table. If you'd like to support us here at the Gamesmith, there are a number of ways you can do that. If you haven't already subscribed, now is a great time. Hit the thumbs up button and give us a like. Ask a question or leave a comment below. Join us on social media like Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Check out our website at thegamesmith.org. Finally, you can join Patreon, which gives you access to content like our podcasts and exclusive videos. Your support in any form is much appreciated. Until next time, I'll see you at the table.